Let's take the stress of choosing a fly rod out. Now, this is gonna be a lengthy video, so grab a beverage and let's get into it. Now, before we get started, if you would just give that thumbs up and consider subscribing because I am looking at world domination in the fly fishing world and we're gonna do it with a subscription to this channel. <laughs> All right, joking aside, let's just get started so i think it's very important that we go over the terminology and the parts of a fly rod before we go any further so we just understand what's going on here and i think what we're going to do first is we're just going to get going right at the fly rod itself so um we're going to look at, at the butt end of this fly rod and in this case what we call this is the real seat now uh real seeps especially the cheaper models could be plastic um a step above that is aluminum anodized inserts or even cork uh you'll see expensive rods will be burled wood um you'll see carbon fiber titanium all sorts of cool fancy things but um you know that's something to keep in mind when it comes to choosing a fly rod now um there's also the up locking and down locking reel seats uh they could also have two knurled um threads here so you can really uh cinch it down so it really locks in um and as well there could be weights that are in the butt end of the uh of the rod and the, these are more niche rods we won't get into that but i thought i would make mention of it moving up we have grips and grips are a very personal thing um there's several types of grips out there there's half wells reverse half wells full wells grip um there's you know straight grips i mean uh, there's a whole bunch of grip profiles and basically you don't even need to know the name of these grips you just need to know what feels good and what doesn't feel good when you get into the shop now uh, another thing that we need to talk about is what is the grip made out of? Is it cork? Is it composite cork? Is it rubberized foam? Or is it all three? Another thing to mention is that um, some uh, rods, especially when you get into the six weight and above and uh, nine and a half feet and well, even nine feet, you'll see these, um, but it's a fighting butt. So it'll be an extension on the back of the rod. Now, I'm not going to get into two handed rods at all in this. This is more just your single handed rods that we're talking about throughout this video and that's what we're going to be choosing or talking about choosing okay so let's get into the rod blank so the rod blank um, at the very beginning you're gonna sometimes have a hook keeper and the hook keeper uh, is for just keeping your hook on the on the rod when you're transporting and walking around into the woods or whatever to get to the next spot um, some rods don't have this uh, Orvis comes to mind my Orvis does not have a uh, hook keeper I kind of miss it I like it so if you like those things that's something you need to keep in mind now the rod blank itself um, the rod blanks could be uh, all sorts of different materials, um, but primarily you're going to see graphite and uh, you'll see, you know, sometimes Kevlar, carbon fiber, that kind of stuff um, as well. Um, uh, the fiberglass, that's a more cheaper option, but sometimes depending on where it's made, it could be quite expensive and pricey. And another one uh, that comes to mind is bamboo. Now, these are really expensive and we're not gonna be touching base at all on that because I think that's a little beyond the scope of most people and it's more of a specialty thing and you're not gonna be looking at how to choose a bamboo rod. You're just gonna be, you probably have enough money that you could just buy a whole bunch of them if you'd like, which is, you know, thumbs up to you. You made it in life. So the next thing we're going to talk about is guides. Um, let me pull this guy up here. Here we go. Here's the... Um, so guide guides are... Um, they, they Usually the first guide is called a stripping guide. And going forward, you're going to have the rest of the guides. And these are uh, snake guides. Now, there are other guides other than snake guides. Hardy has... Um, geez, I can't remember the name of the guide. Um, Anyways, I, I, I don't know what it's called, but Hardy doesn't use snake guides. It has a different guide, um, unless they've changed it. But uh, but anyways, snake guides, and the, the, these are responsible for holding your fly line in. And if, um, and if they're not uh, seated well and put on the, the rod well, then your rod's just not going to work that well. And um, uh, these guides can be a whole bunch of different uh, materials. Um, they could be, uh, on the cheaper end, just like your standard uh, plated steel. Uh, chrome plated um, ceramic guide ones uh, there could be titanium and stainless these are really expensive uh, componentry options um, and you know and so on and so forth but um, primarily what you're gonna see is just 
like your Chrome snake guides on more economical choices. And as well, what's holding them in is something called wraps. And the wraps are sometimes could be ornate and because of that could make a fly rod become pretty darn expensive. But usually when you get into higher end componentry, you will start seeing really nice wraps. Now, um, if even on cheaper rods, you should kind of look at the wraps and make sure that they're, you know, put on nicely, at least nice enough, and that the epoxy is on there and it's not like missing in spots because that's gonna degrade over time. You're gonna have problems later on. We don't want that. So um, moving along are the ferrules. And the ferrules, there's two types of flare, uh, there's two types of ferrules that hold your rod together. So there's a spigot, I mean, there's, I think there's more than that actually. Um, but primarily you're gonna see spigot ferrules and you're also gonna see um, uh, sleeve over ferrules. And depending on who you talk to, some people will like one or the other. I don't really have a preference. They both work quite well. Um, it, if it means something to you, perhaps look a little more into it, but I don't really care uh, uh, either way. But um, one thing that you will want, I think, uh, which is is alignment dots, and you'll find these on the ferrules as well. And it just gives you that extra assurance that everything is aligned properly. And it takes like no time to get your rod set up and, and out on the water, which I mean, could actually be a big deal for some people. So moving along, I shall move my cheat sheet. Rod length could be, you know, from five feet, well past 13 feet uh, for some spay rods and, and, and so on and so forth. Now rod length is quite important because um, shorter rod lengths are really specialized and they're really meant for getting into really tight blue lining situations for technical streams and whatnot. And um, the medium of the of the two is really a nine foot uh, or a, yeah, basically a nine foot rod. A lot of people go with nine feet because it does a lot of things quite well. It can still do the technical tight streams, albeit you can't really get a full cast, but you can get those roll casts really nicely with the nine foot. Um, but the thing is with a longer rod, um, the cool part about them are that they're great at mending. They're great at being able to reach out into a pool so you don't have to get too close to the pool and possibly scare that trophy size trout you've been after all year. So you gotta start thinking about the length because it's quite, quite uh, important. As well, uh, length could also help you with um, accuracy and um, I think that's enough about length. Let's let's kind of get into the action of rods. Now, the action of rods, the action of rods essentially is um, anything from slow to fast, and that's how, and a little bit beyond that. But essentially, um, that's how we rate rods in action. So, a slow rod. Think about a slow rod being really noodly. Um, it's it's very flexible, and a fast rod being very stiff on the other spectrum of the scale. Now, what would you use a soft rod for? A soft rod is for doing very delicate presentations, uh, thinking dry. Flies, thinking that like really, really um, uh, uh, still water pool that you need to just kind of flick just just like that and, and have that at like 6x or 7x tip and just go on beautiful S curves on top and then you know that gorgeous brown trout coming up and taking your fly. That's, that's really what the softer action is really meant for. Now another thing soft action rods can do is uh, they could do close quarter fishing really, really well. Now on the spec, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, the fast rod can really, it has the guts to be able to push out really uh, big heavy rigs, think big, like big streamers, um, heavy uh, uh, nymphing setups, indicator setups, and so on and so forth. But in the medium of that is the medium stiff, or sorry, medium fast. And it can do a little bit of everything and it does it all quite well. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the power. Let's get into the power now. Um, it, it ranges anywhere from zero weight, believe it or not, there's zero weight rods out there, um, you know, well past 12 weight. Um, but essentially, uh, one to three, and we're not gonna get into the Euro nymphing trout space stuff. That's a different discussion for a different video. But essentially a one to three weight rod is gonna be great for like the smaller trout, panfish, that kind of stuff. Anything five pounds and less, you know, uh, probably even less than that. I mean, you can, yes, take on a 10 
10-pound trout or whatever. But we're not trying to kill the trout in, unless, I mean, you want to eat it, then yeah, you can do that. But that's not really a way for this trout to go. You want to bring them in and clock them over the head and take them home for supper. So that's that's essentially what the one weight is for. These are like small pan fishy type things. Now, stepping up to that is a four to five weight. Four to five weight now, we're talking about like medium sized trout. You can go up and probably catch a 10 pound trout and not kill it, you know, at this point. Um, and uh, that that's more like I can, I would consider like a good five to eight, eight pound uh, fish could be handled with that. Now we're even thinking about at, at least at the five weight scale, uh, something like a smallmouth bass would be appropriate on a five weight, um, but not exclusively, but it can be done. But we're talking about the ultimate trout rod. Four and five weight has that in spades. Now moving along from that is six to seven weight rods. Now six to seven weight rods, now we're talking like we can actually handle some bigger fish. Now we're talking about large mouth, small mouth. We're talking about larger trout. You know, we're talking about 10 pound fish. Even a little bit more than that is fine with the seven weight. And as, of course, um, we can even start thinking about carp with uh, with a six and a seven weight rod. Uh, steelhead is definitely in the in uh, the the picture now, and even some smaller salmon, not like the big kings and and whatnot. And um, but but I mean everything within reason, of course. Now moving along from that is the seven or is rather the eight to nine weights. Now we're talking about being able to target some really big fish. We're talking about carp. We're dabbling on the musky stuff at the at the nine weight. Um, big large pike definitely is uh, is is doable. And even like really big largemouth bass that are in really weedy areas. I mean, the, the, you can pretty much do anything from an eight to a nine weight. Now, from that we got 10 plus weight, and 10 we're talking about now, we can do um, basically anything uh, uh, when we're getting up into the big heavy weights, like a 12 weight or, or whatever. Uh, musky, definitely hands down, you can handle those. Really monster pike, uh, huge massive pig salmon, you know. Um, uh, you know in, I don't like steelhead. I think uh, you're you're down at the sevens to eights. Um, but uh, another thing is like um, saltwater applications, that sort of thing. So that's where we're going with that. Now I hope that helps. Let's get into the next thing. <laughs> Okay, now now that now that we we uh, we know the anatomy of a fly rod, we understand the action, the the length, and and uh, the power of fly rods. We need to ask ourselves a few questions about you know narrowing down possibly a thousand fly rod choices right now, and that is what fish are we going to be fishing for? Now you have to be pretty darn um, honest with yourself about all these questions because it's going to help narrow down all those rods to just a, a handful of them. And the the way I look at it is uh, what are you going to be fishing for? Is it going to be large fish, uh, small fish, you know, medium-sized fish? Uh, what species? Uh, so are you going to be going primarily for trout? If it's just a primarily a trout rod, great. Four to five weight and Bob's your uncle. Uh, if, you, if you're a generalist, you want to do a little bit of um, uh, like um, uh, pike pickerel and all that kind of stuff, maybe we're looking at like six, seven and bass, that kind of thing. So remember that so what are you going to be fishing for is going to really help cho choose the power now where are you going to be sh fishing now the where is going to help you with the length of the rod so if you're going to be fishing like really big lakes and um, uh, big rivers then you're going to be thinking about a longer rod we're talking about nine feet even uh, ten feet possibly eleven feet eleven foot rods and beyond um, if we're looking at going small, close quarters, we're looking at nine feet or less. So that's something to think about. Now, how are we gonna be fishing? So this is more primarily uh, geared towards technique. What type of techniques are we looking at? Are we looking at um, streamers? Are we looking at big indicator rigs? Are we looking at tiny little size, you know, 26 trichos or something? I don't know, like Griffith's gnats and, 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 and those type of light, delicate presentations. Well, that's gonna help us choose the, um, the, the, the action of the rod. Are we gonna be needing something really Really delicate so like a softer flexing rod for dry flies are we gonna need a lot of stiffness for for driving out that big huge clouser minnow that we put lead wraps and lead eyes on or or or, or just like for for uh, steelhead we're gonna need to knock out this massive like I got three flies and and a ton of split shot on there and a big old indicator 
you know, do you get what I'm saying here? So we're gonna have to start looking at that. Now, <laughs> the last question I'm gonna ask you in this questionnaire is, um, uh, how, like, what's your skill level? Your skill level is gonna play a big part in this. If you're a complete beginner and you're, you don't pick up that quickly, you know, it takes you time to understand what's going on. You might want to go with a, a slower action rod so you can really feel uh, your cast when when the weight pushes back so you don't crack off that tippet and and that kind of thing. So you want maybe to look at slower action rods. Now, if you're an intermediate or advanced uh, fisherman, you might want to have that medium fast or fast action rod, depending on, of course, what you're doing with it. And um, another thing is, uh, um, there's another category, beginner, but the beginner that is quick learning. If you bought like a beginner rod and you're a quick learner, you're gonna have grow that rod within like a, a season, maybe even a couple months, if not sooner. So maybe you're gonna wanna upgrade to more of a, you know, middle of the road type rod. So that's something to really think about there. Now. Given all this information, I think we can even narrow down our rod choices further by looking at your budget. How much money do you have to spend on your rod? That could that could considerably drop down your price range or your rather your choices significantly just based on if you could afford only two hundred dollars or if you could afford a thousand dollars. Another thing is looking at brands which brand do you want to support if you are brand loyal to a certain place then you're pretty much done you probably only have one or two rod choices now if you don't care about brands then we're still stuck to maybe four or five or even six or seven rods and the way i look at that is which rod manufacturer has the best customer service the best reviews and the best warranty i i look at that as a whole if they all have great warranty um you know and when i say great warranty i'm talking about lifetime which is 25 years usually and uh it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to ship that rod back out um that's something that you need to keep in mind um I think that that really uh, drives home what you need to look for in a rod and um, there are some things when you get into the shop now uh, having all this information going to the shop and actually handling these rods is definitely going to help you now you know choose the one but some things to kind of look at when you're at the shop is um, just making sure that the the <coughs> ferrules and like the the threads are good on the on the uh, real seat there's no like burrs or anything that are catching as well making sure that the wraps are pretty clean there's no like you know missing uh, epoxy on any of the wraps another thing is looking at the guides making sure that the guides don't have any bends or dents or or nicks or anything on them um, making sure that the rod blank doesn't have any cracks or, or anything and yeah sometimes this happens on brand new rods another thing is if the alignment dots uh, or there are alignment dots on your rod making sure when you put it all together that the whole rod aligns nicely and yeah I've had an Orvis that did not um, align properly which kind of was a bummer but something to think about um, uh, let me just I have to look at my uh, cheat sheet for a second I think uh, the, uh, the other thing is about like the grip if if the grip has like a lot of filler in it maybe see if they have a few uh, of the of your rods uh, in stock so you can kind of pick and choose which one you know won't will last the longest that kind of stuff but Anyways, I think that I think that this was a pretty long video. I hope you stuck to the end with me. And if you did, thank you so much. Um, I hope this helps you really come down to, to making a decision and being able to at least take this information and go to your local fly shop and, and make it an enjoyable experience rather than something that's going to stress you out. And with that, I have to say thank you so much for sticking around right to the end. If you did, please, once again, thumbs up and possibly subscribe to my channel. I'm always coming out with new content. And, um, you know, once again, I'm, I'm looking for world domination. So we got to get there. We got to get there. And you're the person to help me out. Another thing is... Um, I guess that's it. You know what? That's it. That's where we're going to leave this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Milan from Greenhorn Flyhorn. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the water. Bye-bye.